Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Being Humans uh, Facebook Live tonight. We're going to do a festive season clearing. So this evening, we're going to look at what makes our joyful, prosperous, goodwill to all people celebratory time and the end of our year where we're finishing off one thing, getting ready to move into another aspect or another part of our lives. Um, what makes it so tricky for so many of us? You know, not everybody finds us a really positive time of the year. A lot of people struggle with all kinds of uh, subconscious programs that make their lives just a little bit more difficult, lonely, sad, and um, this time of year just brings all that kind of thing to the surface. So that's what we're looking at tonight. Um, as you join us, please write down any of those um, situations, issues, programs, events that really make the end of the year and the festive season challenging for you. Uh, we're going to go through those and basically decode and give you some insights into um, into what's going on there. So that's what's happening tonight. I'm Arania from Bring Human. Hey, and I'm Yasamika. All right. And this here is Frank. Okay, so we've got Frank joining us tonight. Whoops, get on screen, Frank. Um, he's just a wee bit tall, eh? But I'm <laughs> going to needs to be a little bit there and a little bit not there. Okay, so Frank is made up. There we go. Frank is made up of seven main chakras. Now, when we've got subconscious programs running, what we've found is that they will favour one chakra more than another. So let's just have a look at those major chakras and we'll see as we go along, we can give you some insights. We can give you some insights into uh, what's going on with the programming that you've got and show you where some of those things might be showing up. So Yasa, do you want to just basically go through yeah. and tell us about Frank's chakras? Each chakra has a sense. Okay, and, and it's an emotional sense. The base chakra is about security. So it's got the sense of security and if, if you've got a Christmas thing going on and it goes to your base chakra where you feel insecure and unstable, it will go straight there. Okay, the orange chakra is all about creating and transforming. So if you ever want to start something, and start building something, transforming it. Let's say make a table out of some wood. You have to transform the wood into a table. Uh, I just fixed up the bird bath, so I've transformed the putty into part of the bird bath. This is that. This is the one that does that. Solar plexus is all about personal identity and power. So if you go to do something really cool and you're feeling feeling empowered about it, your solar plexus chakra is going to go off. This is our internal sun. It's a solar plexus, so it's like, wow, beaming, really good stuff. The heart. Now, this is the big one for tonight, all right? Christmas and the festive season is meant to be all about belonging, connectedness, and purpose. Now, if anything happens to you in the past, happened to you in the past, that stop this connectedness, so therefore you're disconnected, no belonging, lonely, abandoned. It'll go straight to the heart chakra, okay? The throat chakra is about the sense of rightfulness. So when you feel right and you can express yourself, you can express yourself physically, you can express yourself mentally, and you express yourself emotionally, and of course verbally, this one will be open. If someone shuts down your expression, makes you feel wrong, guilty, makes you, uh, perhaps they betray you or they think that you betrayed them, it'll go straight to the throat chakra. The third eye chakra, the, uh, the brow chakra, is all about knowledgeable and wisdom. And so it goes straight into the pineal gland and into the brain. So when you feel aware, perceptive, onto it, bright, sparky, it's this one here, and then you go... His head's and... chopped off. <laughs> Can we bring his head down a bit? His head? Oh. Yeah, his head's chopped off. There we go. Right, so we're talking about this blue one here at the moment. <laughs> Crown chakra is all about the sense of freedom. This is the one that points up to the infinity of the universe. So this is all about freedom. 
unboundfulness. No, it's boundfulness. Bounty. <laughs> no, no limits. No limit. Yeah, that's easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No limits on this one here. So what happens is that when, we'll take you quickly over the quarters, when everything's open and something happens to us to shut us down, which is there, make us feel dumb and stupid, which is this one, makes us feel guilty, wrong, betrayed. Mm. It's this one. It's an interesting point, you know, right through history. If anyone thought that they were guilty of anything or wrong, it's the throat chakra that got it. So it was a guillotine, lynched, strangled, uh, cut their throat. It's the throat. It's this area here that takes the brunt of wrong. Whether you are wronged or you are wrong, it goes throat to the throat chakra. So if you've got a throat tickle, 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 and you lose your voice, something about being wrong or wrong de. Heart chakra. Yeah. Okay. So there's Frankie. Cool. Thanks, Go on, Frank. Mate. I'll just pop Frank down the side here. In case we want to pull them out again. So All when right. we do these this clearing tonight, we will break those up into those segments of that um, those chakras. So our subconscious mind, blessed heart, it's heart. It knows we've got the angle to the throat, the angle to the heart, the angle through the solar plexus, and we'll know it. Right, so I'd just like to say hi to everybody that's that's on board viewing at the moment, um, and to, to Candice, Christine, and Karen. Um, thanks for joining us and commenting. What we'd really like to see is some of your input uh, from anybody that joins us tonight. Pop down any of those situations or um, aspects of the festive season that you find challenging we're going to go through and decode them tonight uh, if you've got any comments any questions about anything that we talk about or you want to add to it or um, you know put your aspect in there as well please do please do so this night is for you we're going to go through and take as many of these and what we call second quarters second quarters are the part of a clearing where things go downhill and are not working in the way that we'd want them to. Our first quarter is our ideal situation. Second quarter, downhill. Okay, so. Here's us as an adult. Okay. Now, the, all, all our issues to do with Christmas come from us as a child or a, new, or a newborn baby. In fact, all our issues to do with everything come from there. Okay. Uh, they're all set before the age of seven. So, you know, and we create the whole lot of us. If you create, if you end up in a stressful Christmas, you're programmed to have a stressful Christmas. If you end up in a sad Christmas where everyone's kind of down and but down in the chops, or you feel down and depressed, you are programmed to have a sad Christmas. Okay? Everything's 50%, and um, that's what we're looking at tonight. Okay, so just to clarify, Christmas is uh, the major seasonal festivities uh, that we have down here in New Zealand in in December, late December, and then we go into New Year. Uh, December is a very, very busy time in New Zealand. It's coming into summer. It's also the end of the year, although not financially, the tax year is different, but it's the end of the year for many businesses, companies, schools, that kind of thing. And then they start up again in January and February. So it's it's kind of the culmination uh, the nine o'clock on the Ouroboros uh, for us down here in New Zealand uh, before we step, step out into the new beginnings. So this clearing that we're doing is more than Christmas. That's just our local. Uh, we're actually looking at the festive season. We're looking at the month of December, any kind of celebrations because people have different belief systems, uh, different worship systems. And this is for everybody, not just those who um, who either celebrate Christmas or do not celebrate Christmas. It's all to do with what goes on in December uh, and basically how that impacts on so much of our lives. So again, if you've got anything there to, to put into the messages for us, uh, hello Pauline, you're welcome and uh, great to see you on tonight. So I'm just going to throw one of the uh, comments that we've already see, received a lovely amount of um, feedback from people. Please add to it. We've got plenty of time. That was, so, that's what makes it personal. That's what's going to personalise it. You can clear everybody else's stuff, but if you've got something lurking below the, the, the surface and you think, oh, I'm a little bit too shy to 
to say that if you want to and you do not want to put anything up on the screen i've got my um i've got my phone here with me if you want to just private message us at being human i can get that and you can be completely anonymous so we're not uh putting people's names to anything that's said unless you put a comment in there of course you know we're acknowledging so anyway the first one that we're going to start with is a situation and this is one that i find personally um challenging at times i find december to be a time when wherever i go somewhere i want to go to the shops i need to do something in town that there's people everywhere there's crowds it's hard to get parking you're waiting in long queues in the um in the stores or you know the lines to the checkouts and there's just people milling and jostling and juggling and you know this one wants that and this one wants that and i've even witnessed situations you know where people kind of arguing over who's going to have what's on the shelf i find that one particularly um irritating for me it makes me feel like i do not want to even go out and partake in anything in december just because of this sudden influx of people and the pressurized environment so uh, okay so where does that come from crown chakra crown okay, chakra so is all about, about that one crown yep. chakra is all about freedom able to do whatever you like limitless no bounds give it heaps so as soon as someone talks about, I'm feeling shut down, I'm feeling squashed, uh, I'm feeling compressed because of the pressure and so forth, go straight to the sound, uh, crown right. chakra. So when we do the clearing, that one's coming up here in the crown. I'll make a note of that so we can narrate that. Yep. Um, what kind of events do you think would set that in place up to seven years old? How would how would that kind of program Some start? Some parents shutting down their children, putting a lid on it, because you know, of course, the children thinks everything comes from a, from every from anywhere, and they have no idea that that uh, there's bank accounts and the hole in the wall these days. They just think that's a thing spitting out Oops. money. So um, anything, especially if a brother or a sister or, or someone comes along and taps you on the top of your head and says, "That's all right, Sonny. That's all right." <laughs> Oops. You don't know. That's a physical shutdown of the crown chakra, and yeah. that's power play, okay? That's power play. So um, anything that constrains a child, and let's face it, you know, a seven-year-old child gets a bit out there all, right? all the time. <laughs> Especially so, when there's you know, celebrations. How do you shut down or say to a yeah. seven-year-old boy or girl, come on, come on, settle down, settle down, sit down over there, and, and that's just basically crown chakra doof. Cool, yeah. all right. Likely to be a blue action? Or well, blue? in the first quarter, this is red. This They're is, red, but this, the, the squashing, is that yeah, a blue? blue? That's a yeah, blue action. Blue. Okay, so the next one we're moving on to, and please, if you've got something, pop it in the comments. Um, share the video with anybody. You know, Share the slide with anybody that you think could benefit from this clearing tonight. That's totally free. It's our gift for you uh, for being part of our community this year, which, you know, we really appreciate um, all the feedback and interaction with you all. Um, so we want to help people to just clear anything, any blockages, so that they can have as great a time at the end of this year and in this festive season as possible. So anyway, the next one we're looking at is people who find the festive season a really sad time and this is due to the death of a loved one uh, in close proximity, but especially in that December, um, possibly the beginning of January, possibly the end of uh, November. No joy. They find it really hard to be joyful and happy because they're um, stricken with grief and memories. Every December pops up. Oh, you know, just before we had the big celebration, um, before the family all got together, we lost, you know, somebody special a couple of days beforehand or, or whatever. So okay. what's that all about? Right on. Where, where are we Frankie looking Brian. at right here on. on Frank? As soon as we look at grief, we look at the lungs. Yep. Okay. So either side of the heart chakra, we got lungs. And so therefore, grief and sadness is in the heart. So that would, if, if a per, anyone's got sadness in their matrix for Christmas, 
that will shut their heart chakra down and make them poorly. And we're talking about lungs, so we're talking about bronchitis. Is it bronchitis? Yeah, bronchitis in the lungs. Uh, pneumonia. pneumonia. Yeah. There you go, pneumonia. Uh, Karen. Karen's just mentioned pneumonia. Oh, okay. Pneumonia in the lungs. Um, yeah. Any lung stuff. And also uh, breasts. Yeah. Anything to do with the breasts, close to the heart chakra. There's heart chakra. It'll have to. Um, it will sometimes have grief those and lymphatic depression. nodes that are under the. Because the heart chakra goes right across here. Yeah. It's just not here. And it's, it's also yeah. pain in that part, the brass strap part of our backs. Pain in there, uh, bottom of the shoulder blades. That's also the back part here. Whoops, turn around, Frank. Um, of our heart chakra. So, but certainly if you're looking at respiratory illnesses, pneumonia, bronchitis, flu. Um, I know we did a transmission much earlier in the year around COVID and we explained how COVID is a virus of the heart chakra. Um, so that's, you know, fluid in the lungs, that kind of thing. Anything to do with that, you know you're dealing with grief and you know that it's a heart chakra issue. So um, Karen's just mentioned there. All right, so we're looking at heart. Where would that have come from originally? Up to the age of seven, where might that have happened? Well, well, let's just say if little uh, Janet, being the four-year-old girl, had her favorite, had her little cat or her little dog that, that she opened her heart up to, or a grandparent, or an uncle, or an auntie, and they lost them, usually through uh, physical death. Loss shuts down the heart quicker than anything. So, if, as I said, if anyone passes on, physically passes, spiritually passes over, but physically dies, yeah, that's right, um, that's loss. And if they were your favourite grandparent, or if you were inside your mum during gestation, so that means whatever you feel, whatever mum feels and whatever she eats and however she reacts, the baby does the same. If anyone has uh, lost a dear one during gestation and mum got upset about it, that means you will have a good dose of sadness in your subconscious matrix because yeah. that's your first home inside a mum. And if all of a sudden everything's shut down, because of grief and sadness and it all goes dark and gloomy, you'll be programmed to have that. That's And that'll go straight to the ticker, straight to your heart. Totally. Um, and uh, hi there to Romaine, who's just joined us. And we're going to go over to Gina now. Um, Karen, I'm going to come back to the other aspect of never getting things done just a little bit later and tie that in with something else. Um, but we're going to pop over to what Gina's got here. She says she feels that people lose their manners so we've got rude behaviour, we've got inconsiderate, especially when we're going to some of those work parties. Um, people, you know, the way they are in the office or the way they might normally be in the family uh, sometimes changes. Yeah, well, people get their bits uh, in a tangle, don't they? And, uh, you know, this is uh, refraining from getting up and greeting people, uh, refraining from actually eyeballing them and actually saying hello. Bah humbug. <laughs> and uh, that's rude that's rude and that basically shows the ignorance of the other the person who does that but um, pressure you know there's a lot of pressure in Christmas Pre yeah pressure and sometimes uh, pressure pressure be in the crown chakra oops squashing there's Frank losing so we've got coming in up here again there's pressure so people feeling pressure uh, and then just wanting to avoid communicating. Oh, poor Frank, I'm having trouble trying to get him on screen. Here. Hang in there, Frankie, bro. We'll, we'll get you there, mate. There we go. Whoops, he's kind of there. He's there for the <laughs> He's kind of there. <laughs> there, I'll put him in the middle. Um, yeah, so we've got that anxiety, that pressure. And then we've got people's, people who, it's like, I can't be bothered with all this. It's just a load of nonsense, you know. And there we're looking, you now I've got, armloads of things happening here when we've got people who are coming from a mental perspective and instead of being able to enjoy the moment and the festivities whoops now you've seen your thing before okay so we've got her red emotional mind this is where she's feeling enjoying and being happy 
Frank and I are just doing a Mexican wave. Oh, you're doing the Mexican wave. <laughs> um, but then you'll get the people who are <laughs> have no time for this emotion. They've got too many things to do. They, they're not interested in celebrating or being social or anything else. They think it's a waste of time. And they've gone right into their blue minds. Now, a lot of rude, boorish, inconsiderate, um, offensive behavior comes out of the blue mind. Usually the red couldn't care less. And their form of being rude as if they're just so busy doing something else that they pay you no heed. But these ones will deliberately, you know, put it down, be a downer, um, and kind of squash people's enjoyment if they're not feeling the vibe. If they're able to get out of their blue mind and go into their red for a while, they'll be fine, even if they're predominantly blue. But if they're blue and they're looking at this um, office get-together or family get-together as a complete waste of time and it's boring and whatever else, they're not going to check their emotions, their feelings, or even their words. So that's what's going on there. I'll just put the red and the blue back over there. Um, so did where did we decide that was going? Crown, you said. What was the thing? About man bad manners and being rude and where are we putting that? What rude. what chakra are we looking at? It could even it could be solar plexus, you know, if if someone's rude and they take they give them a kick in the guts, which is solar plexus, or makes them feel stink, makes them feel powerless. Um, if they're rude, <clears throat> if they're rude and they, they make them feel wrong and guilty, yeah, yeah. that'll go th to the throat chakra. I think this is one of those kind of responses that we yeah. sometimes see, mm. that depending on the situation and the motivation behind, uh, can fit into a number of these different chakras. But I think if we go with solar plexus in the throat, for now, that's a pretty good yeah, start. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. yeah. All right, as long as so, we cover it. Yeah, yeah, we'll cover it. Um, okay, so the next one we're going into is around um, alcohol. Now, we've had a comment from a few people that alcohol gets out of hand. Yep. That there's over-drinking, uh, a tendency towards what seems like alcoholism. Um, and it, it's like the alcohol takes over the whole setting. Alcohol becomes focus. Please remember that alcohol, another word for alcohol is fire water. And then if people go to a party and instead of just hanging around, in the old days it used to be draft beer out of a mini tank or out of a flagon, and people basically got sloshed because it was more water than fire because the alcohol wasn't very high, so people used to get really sloshed. They couldn't talk very well. These days, there's a lot more alcohol in there, so therefore there's more fire. Fire and anger go really well together. So what happens is that this day and age, people may have a few beers, but even the beer has got more alcohol content than most, unless you get a low um, percentage beer. And then all these L LTDs or something, these cans full RTDs, of I RTDs, think, yeah. can of uh, can of fire water. Then they chuck Red Bull in there. That's just fire. That's what that's what alcohol does. It adds fire to your matrix. And the fire chakra is the solar plexus. So yeah. are we talking about alcohol yeah. impacting the solar plexus here? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And of course. Um, you know, I think we can all remember back to different events when we were up to seven and seeing that impact. So we will have seen it happen, you know, we'll have observed it happening and then somewhere along the line, either done it ourselves or uh, been on the receiving end of it. What happened, like, we need will and we need power for motivation to get us up off the seat to go do something. But what happens is if we sit down and we drink more fire that is than necessary, it's got to come out somewhere, and it usually comes out in anger and violence. Yeah. Violence of the waha, which is the mouth, and violence of uh, the physical body. We're actually going to move on to um, violence a little bit later, specifically, because that has come up from a couple of people also. Um, but what, uh, what we've got here now, Karen's just popped in there, uh, saying everybody's tired. Yeah, it's been, been a busy full-on year uh, and always the run-up to um, the, the festive season becomes very pressurized which is going to make us tired 
uh, because especially seeing as you know the pressurized um, reality is in our blue mind and to compensate for that we've got to flick across you know like the pendulum that swings so we go too blue we've got to come back and go too red and this is what makes us tired get so the yourself pressure smashed here, yeah, well, if you've got the alcohol in there as well. Um, so this is where the tiredness is coming from. Um, she's talking about it's hot. Down down here um, in the southern hemisphere, yeah, oh. we're certainly going into summer. Uh, but I've just seen some fabulous photos today of Oklahoma, where I used to live. And they're um, beautiful, beautiful images of snow. But the problem there is that it's bitterly cold. The roads um, in Oklahoma and in the north, we're looking at ice storms and we're looking at snowfalls, which then can impact. So weather can be an issue on how free we are to be able to go about and do uh, the things under this pressure that we're feeling pressured to go shopping, to go visiting, to attend events. Uh, so the, the weather, being tired. But the other thing that, um, that Vesica's mentioning there is financial stress. Uh, I think that's one that we need to go in on. I'll tell you what's a hard case with. We have seven major chakras, right? But we actually have a, a, another five chakras in between these two and in between here. And there's a chakra on our chin and there's a chakra on our nose. Now, our nose chakra is our past life heart. Because it's, in, it's got nasal things either side. And it's, it's the breather, right? Now, funnily enough, the nose is in charge of our numbers and our financial situation. So you can always tell a person what their financial situation is like by the shape of their nose. Mine's got a big fat nose. And it gets squashed <laughs> a lot. I, I say hello to a lot of people. But a big fat nose is quite often a sign of a little bit loose in the financial stuff. But if you meet a person with a, oops, with a sharp nose, and it sticks out a lot, finance is very important to them because mm, there's a particular religion that's well known for the size of its nose and the uh, dy nose dynamics, and they are very good at numbers. Connected to numbers. Yeah. And numbers go straight to dollars. And, um, so if Chris anyone gets a smack in the nose, it's a numbers matrix. Christine's having a bit of a giggle here. She is, she's talking about, you know how they name cyclones and hurricanes after people? Uh, they they have <laughs> girls' names and boys' names sometimes. I'm, I'm not sure if they're ever going to have a cyclone yassa. But, Bloody uh, oath. <laughs> Absolutely. We lovely. can have cyclone yassa here. Mm. Okay. <laughs> um, right, so moving on to the next situation that, that's coming oh, today. Oh, oh, um, we've got people who are unable to relax. So they're so wound up so pressurized that when it actually gets to celebration day they're so you know, still going they're still going and overwhelmed with this that they're unable to calm down enough uh they feel anxious about what's going on um they're waiting for the axe to fall basically it's like oh gee I, you know things haven't been so good in the past and i remember when such and such happens you know back here when I was a kid, and it makes me really anxious every time we come towards the end of the year. What's going on there? And where is it situated? Well, <clears throat> I've just realised that the festive period is all about throwing a red mind and having going away on holiday, having a couple of days off and relaxing. Now, that's the red one, right? People put so much stress on having a red Christmas Funnily enough, Santa's painted red, isn't he? What happens is that the subconscious mind goes, if you want a really, really good red, that means you have to multiply your blue by at least four to build up enough pressure, enough anxiety, so when the pendulum goes over here, you're going to have one spectacular Christmas. So what or, actually happens? Or whatever your festivity or festive is. Or yeah. times, okay? So what happens if the subconscious mind is busting its foo-foo valve for a red celebration at the festive period, which includes <laughs> a new year, the subconscious mind will have to throw a massive pressurized matrix. So when the pendulum goes from here, 
running around, getting presents, running around, cooking this, organising the kids, finishing up the school year. Oh, pressure, pressure, pressure. So the, sub, so the subconscious in here goes, if you want a massive red, mate, you have to throw a massive blue to get that. And it's the blue and the pressurised blue which does that. Because anyone loses their temper, gets shitty, whatever it is, it's usually because of pressure. Yep. Cool. So which chakra are we putting that anxiety into? Yeah. What was it? The anxiety, the unable to relax, feeling anxious, waiting for something. Solar plexus. Solar plexus, yeah. Okay. See the blessed solar plexus? I feel like plexus. I'm about to... See how much it gets the curry? It does. And I'm, you know, we had mm. um, something happen earlier on today and um, I ended up sneezing and sneezing and sneezing and sneezing for ages and it was like sneezing is a, a rejection of something. Um, solar plexus is my strength and challenge in life. Um, we all have one that's more dominant for us than the other and it's our strength and our, our, um, our weakness at the same time. But just talking about the solar plexus and making me want to sneeze. So I'm rejecting, getting ready to reject something here. Uh, Christine okay. said yes, just been named in the oh, Pacific, Pacific Dane Yasa. So I'm going to <laughs> yeah, well, we'll look into that. Suffer and suffer Okay, cash. so we're going to... That's pretty cool. Right, now we've got two... A hurricane or a cyclone named after you. We've got two <laughs> around... Um, and this is in degrees, I guess. So we've got the first one is fighting and arguing. Now this could just be bickering, backstabbing smart mouthing um is this in you know, between a, families a, i think it's on in a family setting you know a bit of shoving pushing um and even getting into a little bit of fighting there in you know name calling that kind of stuff so we're looking at it physically and verbally but then yeah let's go into that one first and then we'll we'll take it one notch higher so just into the you know we're all there gathering yep and, if, and, you know, whether it's on a celebration day or beforehand or whatever, and the, the insults start flying, if the it's arguments insults, start, if it's, if and it's, the fighting. If it's insults, we'll put it in throat chakra. Yep. Because what happens is that the anger, the angry thought comes down here. Oh, Frankie bro. Come, the angry thought comes down here to go into the body. And then the angry arms or whatever happens when a person's yeah. angry. And then <laughs> but what actually happens if the mind goes, you can let the ang anger vent out the mouth, it goes down to the throat chakra and then regurgitates it up. What? In here. Yeah. So if it actually ends up as physical fighting, is it still, it's initiated in no, the throat no. usually, goes, but then where does it go to? Well, um... This is the turquoise chakra here. The one in between the throat and the heart, four fingers, which where most people have, have their dangly bit around their necklace, um, that's turquoise. But that's all about uh, nature spirits and things like that. Heart, heart could fight, especially if a person is being robbed of their purpose. Uh, their purpose. Solar plexus, absolutely. Yeah. So it'll be between the heart and the solar plexus. Could possibly even be in the base if people are feeling um, threatened and insecure. Yep. yep, yep. Right. Okay, so just taking that one notch further. Um, now this is not necessarily now at celebration time or get-togethers. This is pressure on the family that leads to domestic violence uh, and abuse. So we could be looking at mental, we could be looking at um, psychological, we could be looking at actual physical or sexual abuse. Emotional abuse. Emotional abuse. All of those are tied in with domestic violence, which has a tendency to creep up in times of stress. We saw an increase in domestic violence during COVID lockdown. Um, you know, the cabin fever kind of thing. And that was, but, a, that was a crown chakra matrix because it shut everyone in and shut everyone down. But now that we're moving into December and we've got this pressure coming on from all kinds of angles, we've got expectations, we've got finances, we've got all kinds of things. So tell us about the domestic violence and the abuse that can come from it. Where does that originate? 
well, domestic violence, again, it can be anywhere, depending on security. If someone's blocking someone moving forward, which is in the orange one, if someone's depowering another because they feel as though, uh, as a kid, someone come along and I was I was the most powerful one and then you were born and Torag, you've taken my most powerful position in the family, that would create upset. Belonging, who's the favourite, you know, who's connected the most, who's got the most belonging, who's the most favourite child, who's the most favourite grandchild. Holy hell, that's all in the heart. So that's all different kinds of violence. I think yeah. if we're looking at domestic violence, we're looking at power play. We're looking at one person, uh, frequently male, but there are situations where it can be female, more totally. dominant. Absolutely. Um, it, it goes both ways. Um, well, as soon as you mention family, it's definitely got heart in there, right? But what I'm looking at here is the control aspect of it because it's usually about controlling the situation. Yeah, and that's solar plexus. That's solar plexus, yep. Okay, so that's our domestic violence and abuse. Uh, please, if you've got anything to, um, to we're add clear, on we're here, clear this we're going to take soon. all these clearings out. I'm going to pop, because um, my phone's going ding, ding over here. Um, so I'm going to just check and see if there's anything to add to the clearing, but I'll get Yasa set up on the next one. So now here, here's a different one. This is about superficial gatherings. So where everybody's put on their party face and their nice fancy frock or whatever, and they're all smiling sweetly at each other, but there's daggers and stuff going on below the surface. Um, so we've chakra. got, you know, the party face, no substance. So tell us about that one, crown chakra? No, brow chakra. Oh, brow chakra. Yeah, we've got, we've got three <coughs> face chakras, right? The major one is the third eye, and it's just pretty close to the eyeballs. Uh, and... This has got image as well. How do I look? Because, you know, if it's a cold day out there, the last thing that cover, gets covered uh, is your face. The face has got image written all over it, and the third eye is very aware of how a person looks, karmically, this is karmically, and um, that, will go, that will go straight to the brow chakra. Cool. Wow. Right, so we've gone into the brow. Yeah. Um, now the next one, one person seems to be the scapegoat, the one that gets the finger pointed at them, they're blamed for whatever happened in the family and that's not necessarily um, that they were the, the perpetrator in the first place, they may be more of an innocent party, but somebody's perspective has labelled them, judged them, um, They've been created as the scapegoat. You know, we're going to dump all of our grievances on this one person. And because of that, um, what have I got here? Because of that, they get blamed and they get basically ostracized or they're, you know, over in the corner there and nobody wants anything to do with them. Blamed in the throat because they're also judged and criticized. So that's in the throat. And if they get ostracized... That goes down to the heart, because heart's all about belonging and connectedness. As soon as, soon as someone's ostracised, isolated, abandoned, put aside, and there's disconnect or no belonging, that is a heart chakra matrix. It started in the throat, though, didn't it? Blame. Yep. See, yeah, blame. again, like, if so, someone gets their wrong perception and they blame another person, and they, they say, oh, you're wrong, and you should be doing this, and I think you're the... And dump a heck of a lot of judgment on a person straight to the throat. Yep. You watch them get a sore throat. Within a couple of days, they'll have a sore throat because they've taken on all this um, guilt and shame yep. and blame straight in here. Tonsillitis, adenoids as a kid, uh, glandular fever, thyroid, stiff neck. Yeah. Anything in that area. Yeah, anything in here. This is this is the element of space or void. So we think here, and then it has to go over the void or the space to jump into our body so we can start manifesting it. Lots of blocks in the throat. So Lots of blocks. So that also applies to uh, this next one that we had, um, which I've popped into the heart because this is not so much the being blamed part, 
but being deserted, ignored, pushed to the side, pointedly left out. So as you just explained, this is the heart yeah. aspect um, of that action that Yasser was just talking but about. As soon as there's separation, that's heart chakra. And fear is an agent of separation. Yeah. To keep us safe from the fire, if I get close to that flame, the subconscious would go, Oi, keep separate from there, mate, you're going to get burnt. It's a subconscious mind program. Keep me safe from, so I refrain from burning myself in any friggin' flame. <laughs> and that's actually... Third dimensional flame. That's a defense mechanism that yeah, people mate. use. We need it. They will use it against other people to protect themselves. Now, one of the things um, that, that we've discovered is that inside the blue person is a small red core. Now, what they want to avoid is this hard outer shell because the blue is the harder more prickly side of us this Serious. is the soft you know easy going side of us but when we're in this mind right down deep inside is the soft marshmallowy bit and rather than have um this crack and that be exposed which is is devastating to the person in that mindset they will project against someone else. And this is where that scapegoat or this is where some of those rude insults and things that we've talked about can be used as a mechanism to push people away using fear, the fear of, um, you know, getting below the defences. Uh, and so they'll put those walls up and um, sort of counteract, push other people away. All right, so now we talked Blue's earlier... Blue's pushing other people yeah. away, by the way. Um, just Kate... Keep sending us any comments. There we go. Blocks in the throat. Mm. Ah, there we go. So Sharon's got some some little um, lights going off there about blocks in the throat and understanding some of what may have gone Sharon. on in her past. Go Sharon. Sharon. Yeah, huh? Beauty. Um, so we talked earlier about um, a sad time, you know, due to the death of a loved one. Now, it's not always a death that creates tragedy and trauma. So again, we're back in that time frame. We're all supposedly going to be celebrating or celebrate the end of the school year. Kids have just had their graduations and prize givings here in New Zealand. Uh, they're getting ready to move up the next level or move to work or move to uni or, or whatever it is. Um, and things are, you know, drawing to a close. So we've got a lot of clubs and organisations will say, hey, that's been a great year at Bowls this year. Let's have a bit of a party. You know, that kind of thing. And it's, it's everywhere. But um, yeah. if it's not necessarily a death, tragedy and trauma can strike in other ways. So it can be illness. It could be the loss of a job. I remember one year I was told I was going to be uh, reinstated in a school for the, the following year. And uh, due to a whole series of circumstances that were out of my control, I got told basically the day before we were to break up, too late for me to apply for jobs anywhere else. Uh, well, your services are not required next year. And that was a blow, not only because I thought that I had been told I had the work, but that then put financial pressure on. And it's so loss of a job, loss of income, um, maybe a car accident or, you know, I mean, it could be anything, couldn't it? Uh, especially like, you know, with COVID going on, people oh. being unable to actually get their businesses up and running to meet um, purchasing demands and we've got situations here where shelves are empty because we're unable to get product in so there's all kinds of tragedy and trauma can strike um, at this time of year where would that kind of thing everybody's feeling joyful and you've got this massive tragedy it just totally brings you brings okay, you down okay. this is where you have to think you have to think this is bringing things together to make something Right, so if you go to the supermarket, like we have done, or a couple of shops, and we want to create something, but we're unable to create it because there's uh, not enough material to do so. As soon as we want to create, that's in the sacral chakra. So if I wanted to cook a Christmas cake, and the sacral chakra goes, great, let's create Let's transform all these ingredients, da, 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 mix it up, shove it in the oven and bake it. And that's sacral chakra. 
but what happens here according to Christmas and so many people want this and so many people need that um, and especially in, like we have to think back I have to think back say 65 uh, 60 years ago when I was <laughs> 65, free you'd be invisible <laughs> um, because remember back then everything shut down over Christmas yeah so that would have added more pressure back then thinking far out you know we've got this oh we don't have a break in between Christmas yeah. and New Year so all of a sudden there's nothing happening for 10 days mm. now that's in here we think and you know damn well if you've been to the supermarket people that's say scarcity. far out there's so many people here do they actually realise that this is the supermarkets open nearly every day but their subconscious mind goes yeah. no they are not they are shut for 10 days or 8 days or whatever it is that's why people go there and freak out because they are subconsciously programmed to think that this is limited. I remember as a child that there was no Saturday limited or drink. Sunday limited. trading here. And it was only, you know, when I was just a little bit, yeah. um, just still quite small at Friday night shopping open. So, you know, if with no Saturday and Sunday and working, you know, it made it hard, challenging. Different yeah, kind yeah, of lifestyle. and funny, you know, people think the pressure's on now. Far out, think about mum and dad back then. They had to cater for the same amount of kids, same amount of family. Just had to do it differently, but different times. You know, they have a 10-day 10, 10 break. Whew. Um, I'm going to scoot over to what Gina's just popped up here, which is a really interesting point, and I always find myself in this situation. Uh, but alcohol and I don't do too well, um, so it's not something I do a lot of. But Gina says she's the one that always has to be allocated as the sober driver. And she'd like to have a drink or two now and then, but she's the one that has to carry the responsibility for everyone else. So, and so she can't let so her hair down and celebrate. So that's the pattern of being the goody good. And where does that sit? Being the right one. Being the one who does everything right. Being the one who keeps in control. Or is responsible for everyone else. Yeah. You're in the throat. You're His in the throat. You're in the yeah. throat chakra, Gina. Yeah. All, all, always have to do the right thing, you know. Be the goody good. If I was you, I'd go into your matrix and see as a girl whether your purpose was being the goody good and to look after everyone else and do a clearing on it. So it because you're programmed to throw a blue yep. over in here. In celebration time. Yeah. Never enjoy yourself, never let loose, uh, keep everything, you know, make sure I'm the one who does the work in the house. I'll do the dishes, I better drive you there and drive you there. That's like, responsibility. That's responsibility, and that's in here big time. I totally identify with that, though, Gina, because I do remember one time um, when it was agreed that the, the man that I was out with, um, which was one of my husbands, um, that I... I love it when that, you say. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've had millions of them. I really haven't. Um, but, you know, it was going to be... I'm going to have a glass of wine tonight. Can you be the sober driver? Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, um, you know, I've had a glass of wine and then I find out that he's had beers and he's had whiskey chasers and he's had all this and he's far from sober driver. And I'm left in this situation thinking, heck, what do I do now? Because I'd already committed myself to allowing myself to go into the red, have a glass of wine, um, you know, and it, it just really put me in a position where if I'm the sober driver or I'm in any situation, I'm always the sober driver because I'm unable to trust that the other person will um, will hold up their part of the bargain. And that, that's part of being overly responsible and I can identify with that too. So, yeah. yeah. All right. So, if there's enough, we whoops, oh, we're doing great. I just... We've got a few more here. I think we'll just go with the live just a bit longer tonight because we've got so many good things that people want to look at. And then we'll just do a quick flick at the end with the clearing. Um, right, so... With the clearing thing, everyone, this is the part that takes the time. This yeah, is, this, this, the digging in is the This is bit. the part that we have to spend time on working at where these programs are, what chakras stuck into and how it all manifests in a planetary and cosmic reality. The actual clearing, it's yeah. quick. We're just going to use the short version tonight too. Um, 
because this is about the content rather than the actual clearing process. Uh, so those of you who've cleared with us before, we're going to use the flame rain flame process. Uh, but we'll just finish off a few more here. So we've got... Um, oh, now this was a funny one that we heard today um, that, that came into us. Somebody, and it was a small somebody, somebody goes in, opens up the presents, everybody's presents, takes what uh, appeals to them. I've had other people coming in and saying that people will bicker over, oh, you gave them this and you only gave me that, and then, you know, wanting to swap or trade. And I'm going to chuck this one in here as well as part of this. Um, the number of people I see on Trade Me selling their Christmas presents, um, you know, and especially after you've gone to all that effort with the crowds and what have you, and you've chosen what you think that person would like, and the day after or that night it's on Trade Me for sale. Um, so we're looking now at how, what value people put on presents and the impact of the little ones coming in and completely decimating and, and opening up everybody's presents and then nobody's got any idea whose present is whose. Where does that all come from? <laughs> Honour and respect, I suppose, hey? I would think it is. I mean, with the kiddies, obviously, it's, you know, just not understanding. But, um, you know, that whole value, not valuing a respect gift that's given the, to you. And respect is in the throat. Wanting to monetize somebody's in present. The heart. <laughs> respect is definitely in the throat. Yeah. Right, so we're going to go throat and heart here. Aye, aye. Right. I'm just going to group those two together. All right, so it, now how about this one? Well, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Um, this actually has very little to do with the celebration time, but as Yasa was saying, when we were younger, basically um, shops closed for a long time, um, and it made it really difficult to get essential supplies. Um, but we've got everything compressors. So it just, it feels like there's a lot less time to be able to do what you need to do. And for some reason, it seems to be you suddenly have to get everything done or you have to get the car fixed or, or um, emergency, whatever. Uh, so everything compresses, it slows down and we're unable to access the professionals. Now, I know in the States, you guys are basically, you know, you close down Christmas Day. A lot of you are open again, what we call Boxing Day, the 26th. Um, but here in New Zealand, yes, some of the places are open, but it's not uncommon for professionals. So we're talking about dentists, doctors, uh, mechanics. It's, the, it's our summertime, so people take their holidays. And coming up probably the end of this week, a lot of businesses will be closed until a week or two into January. So if you want to get your car repaired or you want to get your dental work done or something else, Orange it can be really challenging and you've got to scout around and find somebody and then you often end up paying through the nose an extra price. Price um, and nose, hear yeah, that? Because, price and nose, yeah, numbers. Because it's a limited supply. Um, so that's what we're looking at. Everything compresses, slows down our ability to move forward and progress. It's almost like we've got to leap out of this blue mind, forced out of the blue mind into the red because we're unable to access the help that we need. So, tell us about that one. <laughs> you said sacral. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, it's the sacral because, you know, you want to get things fixed or you want to get things done and you want something transformed. You know, your aching tooth, you want it transformed into peace, harmony and prosperity yeah. and you need a dentist to do that. And that's all uh, sacral chakra. If you want to get physically fixed, transformed into a healthy person... That's sacral chakra. Yeah. So that's all orange. So now we're looking at belief systems. And I see Sharon's commenting on that throat again here. Responsibility and throats. Big, big, big. Mm. Um, belief systems. So we've got here people who think differently, people who celebrate differently. Now this could just be through personal choice. Um, it could just be your own set of, you know, kind of rules and whatever that you have for yourself. It could be a formalized belief system such as a religion. Um, it could be any kind of ethical thing that you aspire to so or attribute to. So regardless of what it is, whatever your belief system is or your family's belief system, we do things this way here. 
oh, we never do this. We only do that or we only ever do it this way. Regardless of what that is, people have um, these beliefs that impact on how they respond in this situation, you know, in the festive season. And it's not uncommon for them to feel like they're out on a limb. And I know where we're going with this because they're disconnected and they feel like they have no belonging. So can you tell us where we're going with this one? If we've got disconnect um, and no belonging, we are headed to the... Crown chakra. We're to the crown chakra? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> as soon as you start talking about belief system and you start talking about religion and the, the God thing, it's crown chakra. All right, and where's now, the belonging aspect of it? Now what happens is that if you... This is, we operate on two main wires. The wire that comes down through our crown chakra and the wire that comes up through our base chakra. Now, quite often, belief systems and religions have a block on here. And this is actually vitality, spontaneity, and this is the energy coming up in the emotional energy from Mother Earth, all right? So what happens is that then Arania comes along and says, just because my belief system is unable to match yours, <laughs> sorry about that, Mrs. Reed, or and my base chakra is unable to reach yours, it's going to get. See what happens here? The base, the heart chakra is the one in the middle. It's yep. number four. It's the center. There's three here, and there's three here. So when there is uh, a discord with the belief system and what you do with your base chakra. It's going to create no belonging, alienation, separation, disconnectedness, bugger off, you're not part of us, all that kind of stuff, and it goes straight to the heart. It's pretty freaky, really, because the line comes up through the base chakra, a line comes down here, and now when we are balanced, there is a line that comes out here, and that's, that's where the cross is, and they're equal. No cross in your body is longer than the other because three chakras here and three major ones up here. Yep. So cool. that's what's going on. Right. So um, unless anybody has anything else to add to this clearing, I mean, that's quite a hefty number of programs we've looked at tonight. Yeah, man. Uh, we're going to go on and we're going to do the short version we're of gonna a give clearing a form. Uh, we're going to... Um, shift and transform using our sacral um, but we're actually going to clear those programs out of our subconscious mind and leave ourselves open for the flame to bring in more peace harmony prosperity uh, and perfection and ideal for ourselves um, and with the festive season, it's that kind of goodwill and good cheer and joy for, for all and peace on the planet and all that good stuff. Festive so <laughs> that's what we're going to do. We're going to go in and clear that now. So the first thing we need to do is to connect to our flame. That's our centering. And we usually do that either with a little flame this is ours we're connecting to our soul our holy spirit or our superconscious mind it's all of those names is they're all the same same thing so we're going into that fifth dimensional soul now we can make a flame shape we can make a flame shape or we can just visualize so, uh, we've even heard about one person who doesn't see or do anything kinetic but they can hear the crackling of the flame so whatever works for you just imagining a flame that is in the center of our heart space. And this is what we're going to work with. Yeah, you just work off that. We actually have three. We have one in our heart, one in our pineal gland, and one four fingers over our head. And when we breathe in and you just connect to the flame, some people just imagine a flame go and it yep. lights. The... Okay. Okay, so, so that's just all we need in, to do. So just breathe in a flame. Breathe in a flame. And that will connect you to your soul. Okay? So. And that, with that breath, tells the soul, oi, we're just going to do a clearing here. And, and seeing the subs above the soul or on the outside, we're also saying to the sub, okay, we're going to do a clearing now. We've connected to the soul. Yep. We would like to recall 
and acknowledge all past lives that we have had that have impacted on this programming. Yep. From now, back to the eternal flame where we were created as soul in the central sun, all the planetary lifetimes and all the cosmic lifetimes that we've had before we've landed on Mother Earth, where my subconscious mind has protected me from celebrating... Mm. Celebrating? Celebrating. Yeah. And... Because this... this... In, a, in a festive time. Yeah. Festive season of any type, any kind of festivity, this will show up. But it could also relate to your birthday. It could also be other times of celebrations. Could be anniversaries and things. Some of these patterns may come up. But yeah, but at the moment we're looking at December. We're looking at the end of the year. We're looking at the start of the new year and the festivities that go on. Regardless of whatever your festivity is, anything and everything is included. So in the first quarter, we always put, this is the cause. And it's always positive on this type of matrix. So here's little bubs or a, a child between uh, birth and seven getting really excited, yep. looking forward to celebrating life, looking forward to having time with the family where everyone's happy, joyful, there's lots of fun, there's lots of income it's gonna in be the a way great of food, time. there's yep. uh, l lots of uh, sweets, and that means there's lots of shots of energy, which human adults actually change from sugar to alcohol. Anyway, lots um, of social interaction. Yep. And they get to. We often get to see people that we haven't seen for a long time. Sometimes I can remember for me, it was about seeing the cousins, and we didn't often see them. But um, you know, we got together as family, and I saw my cousins. Yeah, so on a planetary level, we get this. We get to see all our planetary family. Well, or connect up to planetary family, to cousins, aunties. Uh, we only see them this time, the period of the year. So what what we what I'm doing is I'm going through the different chakras. We've worked this out. We've planned it out. This is going to be really good in the third eye. Yep. Then we go down. It feels right. Everyone's going to enjoy this. Yep. I see TV programs all about it. I see the movies are all about it. Everyone's talking about the Christmas. I walk into town and everything's happy, ready for this massive celebration. And it feels right and correct for me to enjoy myself. That's here. Then we'll go down to the heart and we'll go, wow, this is a time of belonging. This is a time of connectedness and I'm going to see all my family and Fano. I'm going to connect connect up dots. I'm going to have fun with people who are me because they are in my lineage and in my bloodline. Uh, what else? Uh, I'm going to have purpose. I can, I can show all the family what I'm good at, whether it's at sport, whether it's at art, whether it's at dancing or singing, because everyone's going to be there, and these are the people in the core of my matrix. So these are my family, uh, extended family, and it's got family written all over it, or people I know well as an extended family or adopted family. And keeping in mind that this first quarter, as, as we stated right near the beginning, the first quarter that we're talking about now is the positive it's it's in a perfect world. This is how it would be. This is the way I want it to be. And this is my ideal. So that's where we start. We haven't got onto all those tricky things yet. We're looking at what our subconscious mind could be looking forward to until something goes wrong. And I'm just going to divert there and go to Ebony. Um, she's just put something there about Gina's comment. Um, she's too tired and unable to relax and have a drink and everything. Um, Ebony, uh, Karen also put a comment up there before about the pressure, feeling too tired. So that's all covered in there. Um, and that that will all come up in this aspect of the clearing. So acknowledging what you've got there and we're going to pop that uh, into part of what we've got. It's in interesting. Our if a person goes hard out on the blue and they run out of energy, when the mind flicks over to throw a red, which is an emotional red, instead of having all this excess energy and be excited, 
and the solar plexus is like yahoo and yes enthusiastic and motivated their red goes down further to their base chakra and all they want to do I'm knackered yeah. <laughs> I've, I've run out of foo foo valve and my solar plexus is spent I've transformed so much in my orange chakra all I want to do is go down to my base chakra sit down <laughs> recline lie down and yeah. and that is a matrix uh, instead of having energy to be bouncy and happy they will it's be gone into treble it's gone into tired and <laughs> yeah. it's like far out we've actually covered sick uh drunk tired um pressured uh no energy we've covered that in different aspects here tonight so that really is when the red just gets far too much uh, far too much into that red and it's like bleh. <laughs> people who do the domestics at home they run around they, 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 do, all the, the they do the there. dishes they put the dishes away they do the washing they do the vacuuming they wash the windows and then someone bright so and so comes in and says do you have enough solar plexus energy to go to have a, have a party yeah, it's like, and you go Ugh. mate <laughs> I've just done all the friggin domestics around here the last thing I want to do is have a friggin party I just want to sit down and calm out that's okay. That one. So we've we've gone through what our ideal situation would be: the excitement, the fun, the vitality, the energy, um, boundless energy. Uh, you know, feeling on top of the world, absolutely celebrating, having a marvelous time. That's our ideal in the first quarter, which is this one here. Um, now we move into the second quarter. Some of the emotions for this one here, especially in the heart, loved, wanted, warm, cozy. Beloved, belonging, I, I'm embraced, I'm cherished, I'm adored, I'm worshipped, I'm nurtured, uh, nourished, cared for, treasured, passionate, accepted and appreciated and valued in the first quarter. Uh, I feel like I'm healthy, well, motivated, radiant and that opens everything up. This is opening up your chakra and in, in the base chakra, we want this one open, Frankie bro. We He's want that because <laughs> that's the emotional energy. Yeah, to bring us the energy right up so through the all first the chakras quarter, and around. I feel safe, secure, sound, solid, substantial, grounded, rooted, sheltered, shielded, successful, fortified, and really good. Stuck to Mother Earth and definitely planetary. And that's what we're aiming for. But then we have the second quarter. So this is all the good stuff here. And that then builds up the energy. Oops, I've just better move the blue and the red. This one here builds up the energy. And it's like, wow, yeah, all your chakras is... open up like sea and enemies. Then along comes a series of situations. Now, this is the downer. And those programs that create the down for us are held in our subconscious ego. So this is part of our, our spirit body. Our subconscious mind is where our karmic programming sits. And all of these things that we've talked about tonight are part of our programs. So the fact that I find um, crowds and people jostling and whatever is part of my program. Um, and, you know, some of these other things that we've talked about will be your programs. And they're all sitting in here. So in the second quarter, the energy comes down when these things that we've talked about tonight happen. So... Use from our crown he's chakra. Gonna, he's going to shut down your chakras, yeah. right? Like pull them in. These lovely sea anemones, they're going to go. So this one's affecting the crown chakra. It's bringing that in. There's crowds. There's too many people. There's no parking. Everybody's jostling and pushing. Um, and I just, you know, it's almost panic attack stuff. <laughs> almost panic attack. Then we've got one that's in the heart chakra. This is a sad time because it's due to the death of a loved one. And it's really hard to find any joy. Uh, into the solar plexus. I'm surrounded by people who are over drinking, are um, alcoholics, um, are putting more focus on the alcohol than they are on the or, people in the celebration. Or they're unable to manage their They're unable alcohol. to manage their alcohol and there's too much fire going on here. Uh, the next one, in the, again, in the solar plexus. So I'm unable to relax um, and celebrate. I feel anxious and I keep waiting for something bad to happen. I know the axe is going to fall. It always does. That's sitting here feeling disempowered uh, in the solar plexus. 
there's um in the throat and in the solar plexus there's a whole pile of fighting and arguing some of it verbal and some of it physical i'm surrounded by people that just want to argue with each other and it sometimes it ends up in physical fights um the brow chakra so these gatherings of of my family or my, my supposed friends are only superficial people are putting on their party faces and they're pretending and they're being all nice on the surface but there's all kinds of undercurrents which make me feel it very uncomfortable uh throat i'm blamed um i'm the scapegoat i didn't even really do anything wrong but everybody's dumping all this issue on me and i'm being blamed for everything that everybody else has done so i'm wrong it's in the throat chakra uh heart chakra as a result of of that and other things i'm deserted i'm ignored i'm pointedly left out i'm basically ostracized and left over there and nobody really wants anything to do with me uh sacral so right down whoop, can't see my sacral <laughs> it's the orange one that's down there um it's on your the, pubic hairline and the base which is the one that grounds us to the earth um so where did i get to uh tragedy strikes now whether that's the loss of the job uh the car accident somebody gets put into hospital um oh whatever the, the kids knock something over and smash something that's important or you know whatever um everybody's feeling joyful we're all creating our reality so we're in that sacral chakra we're creating the fun everything goes wrong um so then back into solar plexus we've got violence we've got uh domestic violence and we've got all forms of abuse all those ones that we went through uh, physical emotional sexual mental the time of all that kind of abuse then we've got the throat where we have to be overly responsible and we've got to be the one that's the sober driver we've got to be the one that puts the food on the table we've the got to be the one that right. organizes do the right well, thing we're just the, the one that is stepping forward into that blue mind while others just kind of chill out and basically get the feeling that if i don't do it nobody's going to do it so there's that going on um in the throat also pressure to conform fit in no choice just do as you're told often with kids you know basically um you know just go over there and don't annoy us sort of thing uh solar plexus and then the base there's nothing in this for me i'm being left out i'm the less favored one um and this could be the reflection of of ebony's on the flip side of this uh, someone's having a tantrum that that ebony got all the good gifts well they were definitely feeling like they were left out um or somebody got better than they did um where are we up to throat and heart and the solar plexus we've got here all of those impacted on somebody opens up all the presents or somebody swaps them around somebody trades them takes what they want for themselves nobody knows who the presents belong to because someone's ripped all the paper off in their haste someone um, stole, stole my present uh, somebody's somebody's selling the present that i gave them on on trade me or some other marketplace thing someone's um, opened up my present and stuffed it because yeah. they ripped it oh or, they, or broke or it broke somebody it stood it. on my thing oh, oh, this is my um, favorite present then some we've got everything everything compressing slowing down we're unable to access the professional so we're looking at that sacral we want to move forward and be creative but everything's come to standstill um we also have the base in the throat so we're feeling the pressure we're overly tired and again we're overly responsible worn out from doing everything for everybody um the crown in the heart the different belief systems so the crown with the belief systems the heart feeling like i i am no part of this because I'm different um then also in the heart the sick the grief we talked about grief and sickness um and then about it preventing us from getting things done so preventing us if it gets stuck here in the heart it's unable to move down into the sacral which is that creative area where things do get done uh, so it's stuck up in here we've talked about solar plexus and the throat where we've got bad manners um people are rude and inconsiderate and they've got that blue kind of condemning over overbearing kind of uh, attitude towards us and then finally we're looking at the nose and also the base and sacral chakras where we've got financial pressure financial insecurity 
um, and stress around not being able to provide um, or just feeling, you know, the difficulties in trying to make ends meet. So that's all we, that we've covered tonight. It's all in this clearing. Your subconscious would have listened to that and it will listen to the relevant parts for parts you. Parts for yep. you. Yep. Now, if you have any parts that you personally think to yourself far out that hasn't they haven't mentioned this. Yeah, oh I should have added blah, just blah, blah. mention it, it to yourself or get a picture of yourself thinking far out I can remember as a kid this happened or I can remember when that happened. Because one thing I'm gonna tell you is that the what happens here is that blue people in a positive mind are always building things up tangibly and solid. So when they throw a, a red, they will often throw a negative red. So that means they'll be happy in there building the fence and fixing this and doing that at work. But when they go to throw an emotional mind, it will be a negative one. So they won't know. They won't tired. be able to throw a positive mm. blink and red. They'll they'll moan and they'll bitch and they will complain and they will be negative and they'll be. Nasty and spiky and nasty and spiky is usually blue, because, but because that's how <laughs> they throw a red. They have no idea how to throw a positive. Or the blues a when positive, red. Yeah. Uh, um, blue people often have no idea on how to be happy. Yeah. So they go bugger I'll be sta sad. I'll be angry and I'll be stink. And, or stagnant. And I think tired. Who's that Scrooge sack. guy? That Scrooge guy. Even he's a Scrooge. Yeah. Well, you know, no. If you ever see Ebenezer Scrooge, and uh, have a look at his nose. It's a big, long, sharp one. Well, he's really numbers focused. And he, and he has no idea on how to throw a positive mindset. Okay, so all of those things that we've talked about pulls our energy down. So instead of feeling free and open in our crown chakra, we start to feel trapped and we're blocked. Tied down, caged, boxed in, restricted, controlled, trapped and limited. Yeah, so in the brow chakra, instead of feeling like we're onto it, we're knowledgeable and we're wise, we feel completely stupid. Ignorant, blocked, <laughs> feel confused, foolish. blind, in the dark, dumb, thick, stupid, foolish, embarrassed. Right. And then in the throat, instead of feeling like we're right and um, we're sure and we're certain that we're doing the right thing, we get the blame, we get the shame, we, have, we feel guilt. We feel We're wrong, wronged, incorrect, mistaken, inaccurate, faulty, and flawed, betrayed. unsuitable, judged, criticised, persecuted, yep. punished, blamed, wronged, double-crossed. Okay, cheated. and in the heart, normally we're looking to be connected, to have belonging, uh, to be loved, and to have purpose. But when things go wrong... This is what happens in your heart chakra. Unloved, unwanted, alone, abandoned, discarded... Disconnected. Just detached, rejected, neglected, isolated, separate, solitary, yeah. deserted, <laughs> forsaken, lonely, no belonging, unaccepted, <laughs> unappreciated, undervalued, purposeless, no thing special, cold, empty, uninhibited, unfulfilled. Okay, so then if we're That's in our, in your sacral, uh, in uh, our solar chakra. plexus, this is where we have our excitement, our motivation, our joy, our lift, you know, our spark. But it's also our empowerment, our confidence sits in here. So the things go wrong, all of those are reversed. The masculine part of the solar plexus is powerful, but over here in the negative one, it's powerless, failure, deflated, diminished, damaged, disabled, impotent, beaten and unworthy and worthless. And in the female, which is feminine side of this, is normally happy, joyful. This one feels like sick, negative, unhappy, joyless, unwell, Sick and full of pain, vulnerable, weak, <laughs> hurt, gutless, and freaking lifeless. So, and then into the <laughs> sacral, which is our growth, uh, our creative center. In this chakra, yep. uh, over here in this corner. So, after the dumping, you're going to feel useless, uncreative, unproductive, un unconstruct unconstructive, at a standstill, directionless, going nowhere, lost, impractical, impotent. Pointless and inept. And then finally in the base, which is the closest one to the ground um, and to Mother Earth, when we are feeling disconnected in our base chakra, we're going to become unstable, insecure. We're Unsafe. going to feel groundless unsound. or ungrounded. Loose, groundless, Uns yeah. rootless, 
susceptible, endangered, defenceless, exposed, fragmented, scattered, devastated, annihilated, destroyed. Or any of the emotions that have come to your mind. You can just pop them in there. Anything that I'm reading this has off our come sheet, into by the way, your mind. Chakras decoded. You get this in a course. Anything that comes into your mind, you can just just have a wee think. You think, oh, can I add? Da -da 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 -da. And you just add your personal bit. Because we're doing a general clearing on what we've been given. But you'll know your own personal stuff. If something popped into your mind, put it in there and clear it. Yeah, man. So that's the second. So we had the first, which was our perfect world. We had the second, the down. Now we have a reaction. Usually a lot of people will go first of all to that kind of freak out, panic, annoyed, frustrated, confused, bewildered. We call it a rajas reaction. Where everything goes out. Everything. <coughs> it's, it's explosive energy in freak some out. way or another. Then once we've gone through that, a lot of us will go quiet. Now some people go quiet first and then explode later. Um, but anyway, if we go from the Rajas, which is the out, to the Tamas, which is the in, this is where we crawl into our cave, feel sorry for ourselves, lick our wounds. One of the big things in a, in a Tamas reaction is we consume. So it could be the wine. It's like, and I see so many posts on Facebook about this. You know, oh, I just need a wine to get through the end of the day. It's just like I have to consume. Um, it, could be, it could be cigarettes. You might be a smoker and you've got to have another smoke. Uh, for a lot of us, it's emotional eating. It can be fats and sugars and carbohydrates and all of that really yummy stuff um, that our body really doesn't like, but our subconscious loves because it's it's substituting that comfort food for the love and emotion that it wants. So it puts it to us. It puts it inside us in the form of food. And then we get into what we call a sattva reaction which is a focused moving forward thomas is a in mindset so that's why we consume because we go inwards and retreat so that's the rajas is about out the thomas is all about in and the sattva is all about focus, focus. <laughs> okay so moving out of this quarter now we're coming into what we call the fourth quarter this is our um response kind of our compromise we're unable to have this, so we're going to do this instead. And um, so what would we be, what would we be putting in here? So instead of having this happy, joyful. Sattva has got a lot of fire out, right? So if you have sattva and you're out of balance, you're going to be angry. You're going to be yep. shitty. You're going to throw a rebellion and stuff you and F you. Yep. Okay. And if you're unable to do that, you're going to shove it underneath the carpet and suppress it. Yep. So that's going to give you a gut sake and stomach ulcers. So that's one way of reacting. <laughs> and those that could be those people who are being rude um, at the events and, you know, making those comments. They might be in that satiric mood where they like, I, I'm totally over this. I want nothing more to do with it. Yeah, well, that's rebellion. And that's, that's where they rebellion. use that's where they use their anger to shut the door. Okay. So that's the same as slamming the door on the situation and using their satiric energy to make a bang and fire makes a bang because that's an explosion and another way people can react is to just suck it up deal with it and feel resentful on the inside shove it in your guts which and is, give yourself a gut soak which is actually that's a, good a really idea. um dangerous thing to do for our health it's we're much better off to release that even if we have to go away and release it somewhere else and it's not safe to release it go right for a walk yeah at that point you know it may not be a safe environment to actually let that go um, but somewhere along the line, rather than just stuffing down, stuffing down, which causes all kinds of internal um, illnesses, uh, we need to get out, go for a walk, go to the beach, scream, yell, punch pillow, whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, and please refrain and from kicking out. the trees. The trees <laughs> yeah. have never done anything wrong. Um, <laughs> so that's another one. Um, then we'll get the people who are going to be perfect. Next year I'm going to be so organised that I'm going to have all these lists and I'm going to you know, do this, do I'll organise the whole friggin' thing. I'll start organising in I'll July. I'll take control. You um, dirty bastards. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll, get, I'll do this in July. And so some people will, will react in that way. And they'll start building the pressure up from Boxing Day. So by the time the next Christmas turns up, you're going to get a bloody bomb. <laughs> and there'll be others of us who become extremely anxious, who avoid, who dread uh, any festive 
activities um, who basically just want to put our heads in the sand and forget about anything going on. So those are all, you know, you may have a different way of, of responding yourself. And if you know you do, now's the time to just chuck that in there. Because what we're going to do now is basically suck that all in, that whole program. We're going to get rid of it and then we're going to replace it with the perfection of the flame. And then we're done. Cool. So, so in the fourth quarter, instead of having belonging and connected witness and celebrate life with my family, I'll celebrate life with another type of family. I'll go into a sports group. Well, maybe my pets. I'll, I'll, I'll be, yeah, I'll look after my pets. I'll join a club. Uh, I'll join a gang and I'll have all my belongings belonging somewhere else. Somewhere else yeah. Rather than the blood, because if I get connected up with my blood or my family, it's all going to turn to poo. Yeah. Explosive poo. And it's going to scatter yeah. everywhere. So what happens here is that I'll isolate myself I'll put myself under shitloads of pressure at Christmas time, just so I can fit into reality. Everyone else has got it, so I might as well be one of them. Or I will bugger off to nature and have a quiet one again away myself. from the family, mm. or isolate myself, go climb a tree and have a candy cane or something. Yeah. So let's let's flame it. And I'll I'll hate celebrating myself, and I'll never have the worth of uh, celebrating for myself. Or for the family. Yeah. Yay to isolation. So, all lifetimes. So we're back to talking to this, all right? So all lifetimes where my subconscious mind has protected me from this happy cause because of the stink effect or the violent or the discordant effect. So what happens is that over here, I will create a plan B yep. because the plan A has just <laughs> turned to... Working. Icky poos, all lifetimes where I do this mentally, physically, emotionally. Any karmic debt from any past life that I've carried into this lifetime, where I've observed this pattern, so you would have observed it within the family, where I've been the reciprocant of it. So you would have been a reciprocant of whatever family you are connected to and where I'm programmed after observing it and be the reciprocant I initiate it. I initiate my anger on other people. I dump my sparks on someone else. Or I'll initiate it on myself and make myself angry at me about whatever it is. <coughs> so we carry it all the time. So all lifetimes, when we play this out, what you have to do now is please just imagine everything, all the memories you've got in your head, and anything, you can see it on a piece of paper, whiteboard, or in your mind, you suck it into your eternal flame. The one that's okay? sitting you in can your imagine, heart. You can imagine this as a golden vacuum cleaner. The heart one, the body patterning goes into the heart one. Your mental patterning goes into your third eye one. And your past life one, they, they go into your top flame. So all you have to do is imagine everything going into a flame, you breathe it in, please. That sucks it into the flame. A column of light comes over you, just like beam me up, Scotty, or a stage um, spotlight. And out the top of your crown chakra, like Frankie's over there, crown chakra, we imagine golden rain going out the top of your head and in the middle, white sparks. Like fireworks. Just like fireworks, golden sparks and white sparks. So we've sucked it into your flame. Column of light out the top. Golden rain, please. Cool. Now, all we have to do is we have to fill the void where this used to happen in your subconscious mind. We fill it with your eternal flame. Your what, perfection. Your perfection. Your fifth dimensional portal. It stands for peace, harmony and prosperity omnipotence, omnipresence, and omniscience. So please, you imagine your flame in your heart, in your head, and over the top. Just please breathe in the flame, fill the voids. So what that has done, it's taken out this patterning, whichever ones we triggered, it sucked them into yep, the flame. They've gone. Nothing in the fourth dimension can live in the fifth dimension, so it's gone... 
gone in the twinkling of an eye, then we go, hey, we want to fill the void here, so we've gone suck, and that's got flame in here, rather than all this patterning. So clearings are always a bit like an onion. We always are able to clear the parts that are on the surface, and we went through a whole heap of, um, of situations tonight. You will have had memories and things triggered for you, so we've been able to clear all of that. There could be other aspects for you that are sitting beneath the surface, but with that in mind, um, we'd just like to wish everybody a fabulous festive season. A fabulous end to 2020. It has been the most spectacular year um, of, of everything. It's kind of been the most of all kinds of unusual things. Definitely a year of change and transformation. Um, and looking forward to a 2021. Um, and we're back beginning of January with a whole pile of new, uh, new classes, new programs and back into our regular programs. I think we've got a couple more um, lives. We've got one more live before the end of the year. Um, but yeah, we're just wishing you all the, the very best and uh, get out there and enjoy yourselves. Now, before we go, we got a, all those past lives that you've connected to. You just imagine oh, you can... <laughs> you pull down a column of light on all them and just say so you can pop back in your paradigm now because we've cleared that patterning and you, they can just lift up in the light just the same as this. Okay, so you give them a hug or handshake or just say cheers and they'll lift up, go back in their paradigm. Cool, it's really important. Righto, so here we have... We just want to just connect here. with ourselves and put ourselves... That goes back. Ollie back, back within ourselves. Here's the props. Cool. See, otherwise this energy hangs around. It's no good. Okay, there you go. Cheers. You all right? Have a good Christmas. Love you. There you go. There's the female aspect. Sabo, you all right? Magic. Cheers, mate. Have a good eat. Right. It's really important to clean up after a clearing, otherwise it's going to leave the energy there. Well, all the best, everyone. Trendsetters, give it heaps, whatever you do. And, and enjoy uh, yourselves. Enjoy yourself. Celebrate. All, Get all out there. All the best with your celebrations. Yeah. And we'll see you next week. All right. No, next year. Next year. <laughs> <laughs> good night, everybody. Night, night. Have a goodie.